This week, I'm bringing you the treat of Miss Sarah Brackenridge of Redeemed Decor. She has been in business for over seven years, and she has been a successful brick and mortar owner of actually not one, but two storefronts. Listen in as she shares her secrets behind the scenes of how she built an amazing 100,000 follower audience over on Facebook using consistency of pre-recorded videos and a combination of live videos. I'm super excited, guys. She is such a ton of information. Listen in and enjoy my interview with Miss Sarah Brackenridge. Hey, my friend, it's Melanie Ferguson, your host of Creatives on Fire, the podcast where I hope to inspire you to create a profitable six-figure following online. So turn it up and listen in to amazing stories of success, along with behind the scenes secrets and valuable tips from, you guessed it, Creatives on Fire. Hey, my sweet friend, Melanie here. I have a couple of questions for you. I want to ask you if you are struggling at all with overwhelm, feeling like you need to be in a million places, not having enough time. Maybe you struggle with feeling like you're not good enough. Or who am I? Who am I to be sharing this with my audience? That imposter syndrome that a lot of us struggle with. What about just knowing what the next step is you should take in your business? Does any of this resonate with you? If so, I'd love to invite you to Creatives on Fire Insiders. This is an amazing group of creatives who are finding success and growing their businesses together. It's designed to stop the overwhelm, to build your confidence, and to guide you through the next steps you should take in your business. A lot of our focus inside is on video and live video specifically, how to get good at it, how to really capitalize on the time that we spend in our businesses. If this sounds like anything that interests you, come spend some time with us, because let's face it, who you spend your time with matters. Check us out at creativesonfireinsiders.com. We'll see you there. Welcome back to the podcast, guys. This week, I have the tremendous excitement to bring you Miss Sarah Brackenridge. She has the business Redeemed Decor. She's been in business for over seven years, and most recently, she has grown her audience to well over 100,000 followers. Sarah, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be here. I'm so glad. Is there so let's just dive right in. I'd love to find out because you just have so much genius to share. How did this get started? Were you always in the online space? No. So I actually started my business back in 2014 when I was um, full time teaching and I had three little ones and I just really needed um, I needed some therapy that only crafting could bring me. And I started um reupholstering chairs and painting chairs from thrift stores kind of on my front porch with the last $20 that we have in our bank account. And before I knew it, I was buying nightstands and dressers and um, people were asking would I paint furniture for them. And that's kind of how I started my business. I didn't have a Facebook page or anything like that. Facebook pages were still um, for businesses pretty new back then. Um, But I just did it as an outlet. And before I knew it, people were actually buying pieces from me, having me paint for them. And so I just started as just really a furniture flipper. And it just kind of all went from there. And so tell us what went from there. So from there, um, I was full time teaching and we had three little ones. And about three years later, um, I at that point had decided to be a vendor at a couple shops and things like that. The business was, you know, mildly taking off. I still I still wasn't doing a lot with social media, which I could go back and kick myself for. But, you know, three years later, and I think I had like 400 people on my page. So, you know, I wasn't doing a lot. And then I just decided one day, I think I'm going to quit my job full time teaching. I'm going to bring my kids home. We're going to homeschool them and be that homeschool family. And I'm just going to give my business one year and see, okay, if I really give it my all in social media and business, all of that, what could my business do in one year? And about nine months later, my business completely took off and I never, I never looked back. So is it true? Did you used to have a brick and mortar? 
We did. We actually went from furniture flipping to creating a cabinet refinishing business. And we did our cabinet refinishing business. We had like, we have like 10 girls on staff. We had a garage that we rented. We did that for about three years. And in a three-year period, we did close to 300 homes in our area. Like it was huge. And then I just had this realization that it's really not what I wanted to be branded for. I didn't enjoy it. I just, I didn't want a paint company. I really loved the retail side of it and the DIY side of it. So it was a God thing. And we just completely shut down the cabinet business and we opened a brick and mortar in our town. And um, it was the first store I'd ever owned. And if I could go back, that's what I wanted to do. Like the day I started my business, like I just, I visited these stores and I wanted to have a store, but it took a few years to get there. And then we opened one store and a couple of leaders, we opened our second store. And um, yeah, so, and I loved, I loved having brick and mortar. It was a huge part of our business at that time. And so tell us a little bit about the journey of having the brick and mortar and then a second location. What did that look like for you on the daily? Um, So I was one of those people who opened a brick and mortar and said, having employees and having people work at your store is just as important as paying your power bill. Like I knew I could not open a store and be there every day because I knew it would wear me out. I was still a homeschool mom. You know, I was still like, I knew that I had to put those in place. So I wasn't working the store day to day, even though I would be there for events and, you know, occasionally, but, um, on the daily, you know, I'm ordering for the store. We had about 30 vendors in our store. So there was, you know, running a vendor group, making sure items were fresh, items were staying in and out, tracking sales. So even though I wasn't physically at the store, you know, there's so much that goes into having a brick and mortar, not to mention, you know, I mean, just, there's just so many things. But I, I loved it. I really felt like I thrived with it. We had our store was just very, we were all very close, like a family. Um, I mean, honestly, like we don't have our stores now. And that's the one thing that I really miss. But then I just decided, you know, I wanted to be in a different area because our store was so successful. And I thought, let's go across town and do a second store. So we did that. And the second store did so well and took off and was such an amazing space that about, mm, about six months later, we closed our first store. And thank God we did, because we closed that store in March of 2020. And as we all know, by the end of March of 2020, everything was shutting down. It was crazy. And here I was with a brand new store on the other side of town that was like 3,000 square feet and COVID hit. Wow. How did you transition from that just to strictly to the online space? Well, you know, we had already been online. So like, you know, during COVID, I saw all these people, all these businesses locally, like, hey, we're building a website. Hey, we're going to have a website tomorrow. And like, good for them. But at the same time, I thought, oh my gosh, you should have had that in place so much longer than before lockdown. But thank God we um, had a website that had been going strong for a couple of years. So when COVID hit, it honestly just, I was ready to close my stores by the time COVID hit, but we were still in contract with our second store. Um, so when COVID hit, it absolutely like plummeted our business into the online space. I actually had to shut down my website for a couple of weeks because I could not keep up with sales. And we were still doing live sales to sell all the furniture and all the big things locally and doing curbside and, you know, just the way that everybody transitions. But I knew for me, COVID was confirmation and all the things that happened, like we're ready. We're ready. I don't need to be paying overhead or, you know, staff, or all the things that you pay when you have a brick and mortar, like I can take my business to the online space. So um, we worked our butts off during COVID just doing curbside and all the things you do. But for me, it was just confirmation. And obviously, we made the right move to end up closing our store and going 100% online. And, and I don't regret it for a second. It was amazing. That is amazing. I would like to ask, so if you had it all to do over again and you were just getting into business today, would you go that brick and mortar route or would you just do something different? You know, I would still go the brick and mortar route as a starter. It it helped me find vendors, which were other local DIYers, crafters, creatives in the community who are like lifelong friends and sisters now. It helped me connect to my community. You know, if you're not in the online space in a big way, a brick and mortar is a great way to, if you can afford it, open and just find your people, find your audience. I mean, I still have people who were my first followers on my page or my first customers in my brick and mortar who follow me to this day. It builds relationships. And I mean, I loved brick and mortar. I thought it was fun. I loved the store and the atmosphere. But after a while, you get to the point where you're like, why am I paying rent when there's a better way? And tell us about the better way. What does that look like for you today? 
So when I closed my brick and mortar, when COVID hit, I think I had around 20,000 followers on my Facebook page, which was huge because, you know, I went the first three years of my business and maxed out at about 600 people. So, I mean, we had really grown since we built our website and things like that. Um, we're about a 15 months past that point, And now we're at about 113,000 followers on our page. So I started going, okay, if I'm going to do this, I need to really get serious with it. I need to be you know, really setting things up in the online space. So while I had my brick and mortar for those last few months, I kind of almost did like a test run of like, okay, what could I do online at the same time? We started a boutique right in the middle of COVID. We started um, craft boxes. We do the craft boxes every month um, with Redeemed. Um, and we just kind of started implementing all these things that we could easily ship from our home that wasn't, you know, because I had dealt with big pieces of furniture, large wall hangings, paint, um, like all these things that are just, Either you can't ship or it's a pain in the butt. So I thought, if I don't want to be shipping products 24-7 that's unshippable or just a pain, what can I do to ship? And I just started, I started setting up things in the online space long before I knew that I was going to leave my lease so that when I left, we could just casually. And before I knew it, within two months, we were making more in the online space than we were in our storefront for the entire month. And we had a busy storefront that was popular and it was large and it was in a great space. So the storefront was doing great, but I thought, okay, if I'm making almost double online than I am in a storefront, for me, that was like the final. And I also just felt like, I felt just like peace about it. Like, you know, I pray about everything and I just feel like, you know, there, I've had lots of decisions that I've wanted to make in the past, but peace never came. And like this one, it was like, God just gave me just instant peace about closing my doors. And even if people didn't understand why, like, I still have people who are like, I just don't understand your business. Like, like, do you have a store? Are you crafting? Are you? And it's like, no, I'm, I'm doing like all the things. I just don't have a place that you can visit. Like, you can find me now. Like, I'm not doing workshops in a store, but I'm doing tutorials every day on my page. Like, you may not be able to talk to me in my store, but now you can see me almost every day online in the online space. And we've built a community there. And I think once I realized, hey, online, you need to build a community, not just get on and sell products but actually build a community and relationships with people in the online space. And, and that's so doable today. Like it's, it's so doable. Anybody can do that. I agree. And that was what what I was going to ask you was, was there any specific formula or secret that you feel like attributed to your online growth or how did you get to where you are today with those followers? Um, Well, one thing that I started doing, I, it was actually almost a year ago. I decided to, start doing a little three minute craft video every single day, even if I had to stay up till midnight to get it done, because I had to sit in bed and edit it, which I do almost every night. And I thought every morning at 7am my time, I'm going to schedule because Facebook has this wonderful schedule feature. I'm going to schedule a video so that people will just know to wake up and head to my page or look forward to my video. And I thought, I'm just going to see what that does for my page. And I started doing that mid September of 2020. And maybe be minus a handful of days, I have done it consistently for a year. And it grew my page um, by probably 80,000 followers just from those videos. And people will get on and tell me, I literally just wake up and look for your video or I go back and watch them. And so that was a huge way that I grew my page and, and honestly, just being consistent. And, and I have to say that I know people are so scared to go live. I used to be one of those people. If you actually go back and journey through my page to my first couple lives, I felt like I was live for 30 minutes and they're all about three minute videos. And my husband pulled me in the camera and I'm like, okay, okay, like let's turn this off. This is embarrassing. And then somebody told me one day, you never, it never gets easier. You just get braver. And even today with as many followers as I have, and as much as I have built my business hitting the live button, right before I go live, I can tell you it never gets easier. I'm still nervous. I wonder if somebody's going to judge how I look, if I have something in my teeth, if they don't like my voice, like all those things are still going to happen every time you hit the button, but you just get to a point where you're like, just do it and see what it does for your business. And consistency and lives just built my business. So that is gold. All of that is so freaking awesome. I want to ask you, Sarah, what um, is your schedule for going live or do you have one of those too? You know, I used to think that I needed to have a schedule, but then I realized that I'm just not a scheduled person. And as I, as I've worked from like the brick and mortar to the online industry, I'm not going to say it's made me lazy. It's just made me more of an unscheduled person. 
And, you know, here's the thing. I may have a ton of people in my audience who are available at like noon. And then I may have a whole nother group of people available at five and a whole nother group available at 10 p.m. So I've learned that going live just randomly um, has been great for my business because every time I go live at different times, I catch all new people, all new people who maybe work a different shift and couldn't catch me. So while I used to be more scheduled and do like every day at 9 p.m. or every day at now it's just like, I'm just going to hit the button. And, you know, don't worry about what time you go because most people are going to catch you on the replay anyway. So when you go live, even if there's 10 people watching, just act like there's hundreds of people there because eventually there will be if you have that kind of platform and people are catching you on the replay. But yeah, I, I used to be really scheduled and now I'm just like, you know what, what's in my craft room? Let's hit the live button. And those have been some of my most successful lives. <laughs> Oh, that is so amazing to understand that like you don't have to be so rigid. But how often do you would you say you do that a week? Is there a rhythm? Um, Well, I have like a VIP crafting group and I go live in there almost every day just doing special things in my VIP group. And then on my main page, um, I'd say in the summer, maybe a couple of times a week as we gear back up into the holiday season um, and people are home more and all of that. I try to go on at least five times a week. And I mean, to be honest, life happens. And I have some weeks where I may not be on at all, or I can only hit the button one time. But now my page is big enough. And we have so many videos that I mean, I'll have people write me and say, I haven't seen you in a long time, but I just went and watched two hours of your videos. So like, there's enough content there to keep people busy and at least form a relationship or get who I am. Um, So when I hit the live button now, um, people are there, they're ready, they feel like they know me. And yeah, so don't get don't get worked up on Like I see so many people who are like, you need to have it scheduled. You need to have like, you know, a theme you need to. And like, I think that does work great for some people, but I found for me and my business, like spontaneity has always won. And that's so key is to really know yourself well enough and your audience well enough to know what's going to work. And so I guess I would say, what do you go live about? Um, I'm usually crafting. I usually have, you know, like right now, the Dollar Tree you know, industry is just so huge with all the little crafts and they've gotten so great in their stores. So a lot of times I go live with things that I found there. If I left Hobby Lobby, um, I'll go live and I'll do just, hey, look at all the stuff I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Now let's make something, you know, just giving people ideas. You know, we do live sales now because, you know, the thing is when you craft every single day, you end up with a lot of merchandise. (laughs) And I'm not a big Etsy person personally, like I'll put things on my website, but I have found that people love after every couple of weeks to do a live sale. Um, I even have people ask if I will sign my craft before I mail them to them. So there is some kind of a, which I got to tell you, I felt really awkward the first couple of times, but now I just try to slip a thank you note in because I just feel so weird. But um, a lot of, you know, you'll find that your audience not only wants to follow you and um, craft with you, but they feel connected to what you made and they want to buy that item. So because of that, we have started doing live sales every couple of weeks and we sell out every time. And, I mean, it, it's just great. And it means so much to me that somebody would want to just buy like this Dollar Tree craft that I just made. Um, but again, it's all about community. And if you are building that relationship online, people feel connected to more than just the item that they bought. And I just think that that's just key in the online space. I love it. And so, Sarah, you have so much going on. You are a homeschool <laughs> mom. You are an online queen. How do you stay focused? How do you not let life get in the way? Oh, goodness. Um, You know, I really have to give myself goals. And even though I'm not like a person who gets up and opens my planner and says at 10 o'clock, I'm going to do this. And at 11 o'clock, I know that every day I need to have a video ready for Facebook the next day. I know that every day I need to show up somewhere in the online space, whether it's in, you know, some days I don't have time to go live anywhere, but guess what? There's Facebook stories. And sometimes people connect more with you in your stories that are just quick tidbits and they get to see your face or what you did that day. Um, and sometimes I'll get more messages and reactions from that. So that's a good way. Um, I just know that every day I need to get up, have time with my family, have obviously, you know, I'm obviously a mom and a wife and I'm cleaning the house and doing things. And, but I just know like every day that there are certain things I need to do. And at some level I need to connect with my audience and I may not be able to push that live button, but, Facebook and Instagram and all the places have made it so easy to connect in just quick tidbit that I mean just showing your face and showing up is huge because it keeps people well it keeps them in your feed it keeps what you're doing on their mind it keeps the next thing or whatever like people are just constantly watching so 
I think that's so important to remember that showing up for them is part of selling. It's if, if they don't feel a connection with you because they rarely ever see you or don't even get the opportunity to meet you because you're not online, then that right there hurts your ability to grow and sell. So absolutely. Um, okay, Sarah, what motivates you? Oh, goodness. Um, what motivates me? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a, a wife and a mom. And, you know, my husband actually quit his full time job and sold his business about four or five years ago to come on board with me full time, because um, we were just so busy. And so I mean, I love the fact that he works side by side with me every day, which you think would be crazy. But we're just we're husband and wife, but we're best friends. And I love that. But you know, we do everything we do for our family, you know, for, um, you know, we love our church. We're very close with our church family. Um, you know, we are not only able to provide a good living for our kids and our family, but like, we're able to give to things, you know, in our community, things at our church, um, you know, like it's so great to actually be able to give back. Like that's amazing. Cause we had times in our life where we couldn't even hardly pay our rent. And now God is blessing us to the point where we can give back. And I mean, really just being able to, my biggest motivator is the opposite of having your own business and running it the way you want is working for someone else and running their business the way they want for less pay, more hours and more stress. So like I wake up every day and go, okay, God has given me, and I mean, I've worked very hard, but God has really blessed us with what we have here. We, we literally walk out to our our pool barn where our studios and our work area are every morning and we just work and anytime we want to go in and have a break and be with our kids or we need to do school or we're like we just have that we have this freedom and I think freedom freedom in like your life and family and your work is the biggest motivator because I once you've done that you could never go back it's true it's true I have to second every single every single word of that. <laughs> so, um, Sarah, our time has been so short. I uh, <laughs> want to know where can everyone that's listening find you in the online space? So our website is redeemeddecor.org and it's just all one word. Um, that's where we, you know, obviously have like our craft boxes and our DIY kits and things like that. You can find us on Facebook at Redeemed Decor and of course over on Instagram, um, Instagram, same name. And um, we would love to, to see you over there. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, my friend, for listening to the podcast. I'm blessed every single time you come back and listen to an episode. It's especially amazing when you share it with others on social media. So be sure to follow Creatives on Fire online. Listen, if you have not already done so, I want you to go ahead and download the five ideas I personally used to explode my online audience growth to a six-figure following. You can find that at creativesonfirepodcast.com. I appreciate you. And until next time, stay inspired.